Well, good morning from the Cottage Farmstead Garden on this very misty and gray September day. Uh, we've been very dry recently, so it's really nice to have this nice, gentle rain coming in, and it definitely cooled the weather down. Pulled out some flannel this morning because it was just a little nippy with the wind blowing. Behind me here, you can see the sunflowers are beautiful. So I think in my August garden tour video, uh, I shared that we didn't see a lot of pollinators around and it was like it wasn't buzzing as much life. These have done the trick. We, they are loaded with little bumblebees that are thrilled to be here and I also see them going around and pollinating our tomatillos and some of the mustard greens that have got bolted. So they have definitely done the trick in attracting the pollinators around here. So other than the show-stopping sunflowers, the rest of the garden is incredibly overgrown. Uh, we love using the mulch because it definitely kept the weed pressure down, but, you know, if you never prune a tomato bush, they turn into a, just a total jungle. Uh, we do have some fruit ripening in there, so that's exciting. We'll have to plant a sauce or salsa making day soon, but for the most part, it's just a big old tangled mess that we'll have to deal with another day. Our poor cucumbers, since the last video, uh, succumbed to the mosaic virus, which happens pretty much towards the end of the summer every year. We did not get quite as many cucumbers off of it because it did get hit um, so early in its reproduction cycle. Usually we plant cucumbers earlier. We get a good crop in before they just get wiped out. I did save some seed from some of the over mature ripe yellow ones. So we'll have plenty of pickles of years to come, just not too many this year. The zinnias have been beautiful. This is a uh, thing called Green Envy, is that variety. I think my mother-in-law gave me some of those seeds. So I don't remember what the name of this variety is. Let me find one that's a little less spent looking. Yeah, look at that. They're beautiful. Oop, I'm sorry, Bumblebee. You're welcome to have the flower. Let's see if this one's not taken. Yeah, look at that. They're so beautiful. We've been harvesting okra like crazy, and you can see that we still have plenty. Like there's a giant one right there that we don't get to. They get woody too fast. We are leaving some on the vines right now to allow for seed saving, because um, this is a great variety for this area. And we've been able to put away several quart bags, so it'll be perfect for gumbos throughout the winter. The last few times I've been out here, it's been in the evening, and these have already closed up for the day. These are the okra blooms and they're beautiful. And the ants equally love them. They get the nectar from them, but they're so pretty. But they're only open during the day, so when I'm out here in the evening, they're already so tightly closed up that I can't get a good shot of them. As you can see, there's a ton of okra still coming. They're gonna just keep producing pretty much right up until frost. And so we'll keep saving as much as we can. And our green beans have lived up to their name provider. They have been giving us gallon upon gallons of green beans to put in the freezer. There's more on there that if it ever dries out today, I'll probably be harvesting some more, but it's loaded. Similar with the okra, we're letting this bush here on the end let all of the beans go to maturity and dry on the vine so that we can seed save this as well because it's our favorite variety to grow every year. Here in the tomato jungle, you can see the eagle heart variety back there. It looks like the sun gold and I am pleased to announce that I have found a cherry tomato that tastes like the sun gold that is not a hybrid. I'm pretty sure that this Eigelhart variety is one of the parents of the sun gold. It has the same delicious flavor but it has the added bonus that I can save the seed year to year so I don't have to rely on a seed company to have it in stock. So I'm very excited to have finally found the cherry tomato that I want to grow every year. And like most gardeners, <laughs> At least down in the south, we are covered in leaf-footed beetles on our tomatoes by this time of the summer. As you can see, they are multiplying as we speak, and they will be everywhere. They're not a huge detriment, they're just more annoying than anything else. Uh, I mean, they will nibble on your tomatoes a little bit, but not enough that it'll, like, destroy your harvest. Like I said, it just, they're covered by this time of year in leaf-footed beetles. They're everywhere. Our paste tomatoes are just starting to blush. So it should be pretty soon and we'll be able to start harvesting these for some sauces or freezing to, you know, do some salsa later. Because I don't know if we'll get to canning uh, this year with the house build, but we can definitely freeze it maybe this winter. Spend some time canning in our brand new kitchen. So look at all that fruit set on the paste tomatoes. Plenty of that will be ripening very soon. So the basil is looking gorgeous here and it's doing the job that we planted it for. 
We don't obviously eat this much basil, but we do sell this basil to local chefs at restaurants. And that little bit extra cash allows us to buy milk and occasionally eggs from the neighbor across the street so that we are able to grow something sell it and then trade that cash for something else allows us to eat and support local without drawing from our paychecks as we're trying to build our house so this is just a way another way to kind of barter and exchange in the modern world well, i hope you enjoyed a quick tour of our september garden here being in zone 8a 7b region we will be able to continue getting harvest off our garden well into october as the daylight decreases the fruiting crops will slow down so like our tomatoes won't set as much fruit but we will still continue to enjoy harvest out of here for many more weeks to come. And we'll hopefully give you an October tour before we rip it out for the season. And we're also planning on planting some greens like chard and kale, um, possibly onions and garlic uh, towards November. And maybe just maybe some carrots. We'll see if they grow in our clay soil or not, but we will catch you next time. <music>